Hello, my name is Nigel Crisp, and it's my great privilege to be the co-chair of Nursing Now. And I've been asked to talk to you a bit about advocacy or lobbying or persuading decision makers to do something that you want them to do. Now, some years ago, I was chief executive of the National Health Service in England, which is the largest health system in the world with 1.3 million employees. So you can imagine I had many people coming to me every day lobbying or advocating for something or trying to persuade me to do something or trying to persuade me to get the organization to do something. So over that period, I've learned quite a lot about advocacy and lobbying, learned quite a lot about what works and what doesn't work. So let me just give you three tips from my experience. First one is very simple. It's know what you're talking about and know what it is you're asking for. It's really important that you're not just coming just to complain and say, this isn't any good, you've got to do something about it. It's much more effective for you to come and say, this is the problem, these are the facts about the problem, it's not just happening here, it's happening there, it's happening elsewhere, and this is the solution. This is what you need to do, minister or chief executive or, or politician or whoever it is you're talking to. So you're giving them the facts and you're also giving them a solution. You're the expert, not them. And they know and they can understand your credibility. Really important to be credible and not just somebody who's just coming to complain because we get a lot of that as well. And it's important that people have the opportunity to complain. But if you're trying to make change happen, you need to come with a solution as well. The second thing is to think about the fact that this isn't just about evidence and about facts. You may think, well, obviously they've got to do this, but actually think about who might be against that, or who might be for it. Who might your allies be in trying to persuade this politician to make the change happen? And who might be the people who don't want that change to happen? Let me take a simple example. When I was chief executive of the NHS, um, I got lobbied by nurses and indeed others who said that nurses should be able to prescribe a range of drugs. Now, I won't go into the details, but very simply, the, the medical profession was very largely against this idea. They didn't want nurses to be able to do this. Most nurses were for it, but there were some doctors who were also for it, and we made them our allies. So think about who's on your side, because it's not going to be determined entirely on the facts. It's actually about, you know, who are going to be the supporters? What are going to be the issues? How do you neutralize the people who are against it and who don't want change? And how do you promote the people who do want change? So in those discussions, um, I'd been persuaded that this is an important thing to do. I got some of the senior doctors together who were also persuaded of that. We talked to the prime minister and so on. So you built up force. Now, it was about nurses and prescribing, and nurses were the big movers in all of that. But actually, the allies were really important as well. And having the prime minister on your side is really even more important when you're talking to the minister or whoever you're talking to. So that's the second tip. Think about who's against the change you're asking for. Think about who your allies are. And then the third one is think about the person you're talking to. Think about who it is, the group or the individual that you want to persuade to do something. Think about the person or the people who are your target. And put it simply, what's in it for them? Why should they agree? Remember, there's a basic point here, which is that everything in health is a priority for somebody. I reckon I got lobbied five times a day for five years when I was chief executive. And it might be the people saying pharmacists are the most important people and we, we just don't spend enough on pharmacists and we've got to train them better. Or renal medicine is really where the gaps are. Or cystic fibrosis or heart disease. Or of course, it's the elderly, but how can you ignore the children? Everything in healthcare is a priority. So why will your lobbying, your advocacy stand out? How are you going to persuade the person in front of you? And it's partly the argument you make about why it's so good and why now is the time that you give this priority as opposed to renal medicine or pediatrics or whatever else it is. Um, but it's also partly what's in it for them. Will it make them look good, to put it simply? Will it help them as a politician? Will it help them with their career? Will they feel good about themselves from doing it. 
So those would be three important tips. There are plenty of other things. This is quite sophisticated, but know what you're doing and what you're asking for. Make sure you know who your allies are and who's going to be against it and know what the arguments against it are like as well. And thirdly, what's in it for the politician or the decision maker? Why should they choose you? Why should they support your cause as opposed to all those others that they are listening to every day?